Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a beta I played recently for a game that's out in February next year. Uh, the beta was for Trials Rising. So Trials is really dear to me because back when I was in middle school, uh, I used to play a game on computer called Elastomania. It was a 2D motorbike game and Trials really captured that feeling of those old 2D motorbike games and sort of brought it into the next generation, you know? So Trials HD and Trials Evolution were on the Xbox 360. Trials Fusion came out on Xbox One and PS4. And now we're at the fourth in the series on the consoles called Trials Rising, which is out next year. When Trials Fusion came out, I was so excited. This was actually my first game for the PS4 and the first reason I had to buy one. I played this game for, I reckon about six months straight. I just would come home every day and uh, play this ridiculous 2D motorbike game, but it's just so much fun. Trials is really known for its uh, easy to pick up, hard to master approach. And uh, it's absolutely true, you know? I've, I've played this for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and I'm still awful at the harder levels. But that aside, we're not talking about a game that came out years ago. We're talking about a game that comes out next year. It was announced at E3, a beta just ran last weekend, and uh, one of my Instagram friends, whose name I'm gonna put here because I don't know how to pronounce it. Fralamet? Fralamet. Fralametta. Fralametta. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but she, was lovely enough to send me a beta code and I'm so thankful. So let's talk about Trials Rising. First thing I will mention is obviously there's a beta and betas always have troubles. About three courses in, uh, I ran into a problem that would prevent me from going any further. I had to Google it and check. Uh, apparently this was a widespread bug that was known. So I had to reset my uh, progress and start again and then play it all offline, which was a bit of a pain. Secondly, when I did switch to online and tried to get a match, I spent uh, 15 minutes waiting for a match to come in and I couldn't get anything. So I actually haven't played any online yet. I was only able to play the single player mode. On top of that, I found a few little quirks and bugs. Some were more hilarious than the others. My favorite was the motorbike that just didn't appear sometimes uh, on the motorbike selection screen. I don't know, every time it came up, I had a little chuckle, so that was fun. <laughs> so the good news is Trials is back. Uh, it's the same fantastic gameplay that they've had from Trials HD. As I said before, easy to pick up, hard to master, and that's how I really, really like it. It's all physics based. It's really quite addictive. Uh, trying to get a perfect run on a course is very challenging, especially along some of the harder ones. The beta included mostly easy to medium courses with one hard course at the end. So for the most part, I was able to get them on like one or two attempts, but the hard one, oh God, how many was it? 259 attempts just to get through one run of the course. I'm not the most talented gamer in the world. It's why I do more collecting than actual playing. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's really difficult to get a clean run, especially in the harder courses. So the new big feature here that they were really pushing through the E3 advertising is that you're always racing against other people. And when you're playing single player, this sort of works with ghosts. As far as I can tell, when you're connected to the internet, the game will download ghost runs of other players around the world and then input them into your run so you can compare yourself and see how well you're doing compared to other random players. If you're not connected to the internet, there's preset ghosts that'll run alongside you, created obviously by the developers. You can always turn these ghosts off through the settings menu, but I didn't mind them there. I sort of found it interesting to see how well other players were doing compared to me. So let's talk about the differences between Trials Fusion and Trials Rising. Fusion was a series of levels that you did one by one by one by one. And once you gained enough medals by doing well in each of them, you can unlock the next set of levels. Trials Rising sort of runs the same way, but it's presented slightly differently. So instead of uh, level one, level two, level three, they give you a world map. And with this, each level is actually based on real life locations. I've got to say, I really prefer the real world locations of Trials Rising versus the futuristic uh, locations and emphasis in Trials Fusion. I like that Rising is grounded in reality. My favorite level that I got to play was one that was set in a uh, cargo airplane flying over Russia. There's a little moment in the level where just the plane drops and you just jump into anti-gravity for a second. And it's just little like bits like that that I wasn't expecting. 
that sort of uh, spice things up a bit, I guess. Although there was only about a dozen or so levels available in the beta, the game really pushes you to go back and replay levels and it'll impose different challenges for you to try and overcome. And these come in the form of sponsors. So within the game, different brands will come and approach you and say, hey, we want to sponsor you, but you've got to pull off this, this, and this, and then we'll pay you. It might be like do three backflips and finish you know, with a silver medal time or I don't know, something like that. I sort of found this a little bit annoying having to go back and do these levels again and again and again. I'm, I'm hoping this changes by the full release, but I found a lot of the challenges to be mundane, I guess. It'd be like, do 10 wheelies and that's it. And so you could spend like half an hour trying to pull off these 10 wheelies and it would still be considered a pass, even though you've done a terrible job of running the course, I guess. I don't really know how else to explain it. And again, I'm sure this is just present because we're in the easier levels. That was all that was given to us in the beta. In the beta. Beta, beta, tomato, tomato. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping they really uh, push the time limits as well as the performance challenges as well. Outside of actually racing, there's also gonna be a bunch of other mini games. They gave us one in the beta called Bomb Bouncer. The idea is that you try to bounce yourself across bombs and get the furthest distance possible. It's real silly, but kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like it. In the Trials games, you've always been able to customize your player character a little bit. This one, they've gone all out, which is kind of cool. Um, you can change almost anything. Your person's skin color can be literally any color. You can be a giant green or blue man if you want. You can be male or female rider. You can change their clothes. This does bring me to something that did raise my eyebrows a little bit when I came across it. And that is everyone's favorite word, loot boxes. Uh, so yes, Trials Rising does have loot boxes. I don't know why they've taken this approach. You know, they literally function like any other loot boxes in all of your most hated loot box games. Every time your character goes up a level through the game, you get a loot box. And then you have to be connected online to open it and it'll spit out three random items, whether they be a pair of pants, a t-shirt, a helmet, a sticker, or the in-game coin currency. As far as I can tell, it's all like appearance changing only, thankfully. But yeah, it's always still a little bit, Ugh, like surely you can do a better system than a literal box that opens and gives you random prizes. <sighs> I don't know. It's just got such a bad reputation. I don't know why they still do stuff like this. Like, come on guys, learn from your mistakes. Gosh. So that on top of not being able to play online was a bit of a pain. And also the beta ended like nine hours before it was advertised to be ending. I woke up the next morning expecting to be able to hop online for a little bit and uh, it was shut. And I checked Twitter and like people were like, yo guys, it's meant to be open still. And they hadn't said anything. So I don't know what's up there. Thankfully, I still had about two and a half hours with the beta and was able to get a real good feel. It's just classic trials. You know, there's some bells and whistles, but as long as they keep to that main uh, feel of the motorbikes, I'm happy. I'm hoping to pick this game up on Switch because I'm so excited about having Trials handheld. I'm very curious to see how well it runs on Switch though. Some of the textures and levels were struggling to load in time on the PlayStation 4 and obviously the Switch has significantly less graphics capabilities. So we'll see how that pans out. Fingers crossed the Switch wasn't part of the beta run which was also a little unusual, but uh, I don't know. As long as they keep to the good, sweet trials goodness, the graphics don't have to be fantastic. I'm not that bothered, you know? I used to play Elastomania, so it was basically a Flash game, but the gameplay was good, and uh, that's, that's all I asked for, you know? So yeah, that about wraps up my thoughts on the Trials Rising beta. Um, super cool to be able to play it months and months in advance before it comes out. Uh, again, February next year, for those that are interested, for those that are not, pfft, go away, I don't want to tell you, I don't want to tell you.
Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank <music> you.